Hello, and welcome back to Zenith Tech. We're here today with a video on uh, how to pick your processor for your new computer. Now this is specifically around the CPU, the central processing unit. We're gonna be talking about what that means, what that is in the next couple minutes. Uh, feel free to skip past that. I will put a link in the description that'll send you right to um, the next section, which is which brand to pick, AMD versus Intel. There are benefits and uh, issues with both brands. And then we're also going to be talking about compatibility. So what do you need to be looking into when you are picking your processor? What types of things do you have to keep in mind to make sure that you pick the processor that's going to fit your system and your budget the best? The central processing unit is the chip sitting on the middle of a motherboard that directs all of the rest of the components and tells them what they need to do. It also does a bulk of the computation when it comes to 3D rendering or video editing. These are two big things that I work on, however CPUs are essential for any type of computer. So why is a processor so important? Well, it's important for a variety of reasons, but the big one is essentially you need a processor to have a computer. If you don't have a processor, you can't really have a computer. So making sure that you pick the right processor for your application is essential. We're going to be getting that in the third section of this video, where we talk about the compatibility with the other things in your system, making sure that you choose a CPU that does what it needs to, but you don't over spend on the processor if you really don't need to. Because in a lot of workloads, especially general computer building um, or gaming systems in particular, you don't need a very high-end processor to run your games very well, or to run your internet browser, or to run Minesweeper, or Minecraft, or any of those types of things. A pretty basic processor can do that. Um, but if you want some advanced features, if you want some of the uh, higher compatibility that higher end processors have, then you're going to have to spend a bit more later down the road. So why should I be worried about the processor that I pick? Well, if you don't pick the right processor, you're going to have a less than optimal budget or uh, allocation, or you're going to have a less than optimal performance in the end game when you have finished your computer. If you choose a processor that is too high end, you're going to spend way too much on it. For instance, the processor that I have in my machine, it costs roughly $300. Um, now, it was $300 because I found a good deal on it. However, most processors in this core range and the gigahertz range are much more expensive. Um, processors can range up to $1,000 at this point, or even higher if you choose to go with Xeons um, or uh, or other uh, processors. But those $1,000 processors that you might be able to buy wouldn't give you nearly the performance per dollar that you would get out of, say, a $50, $60, $70 dollar processor that you can pick up pretty much anywhere at this point. So, so there are two different brands or two different companies that manufacture processors. There's AMD and there's Intel. Now there are a, ver there are a variety of other companies that make processors, such as Snapdragon and IBM, to name a couple big ones. Uh, but they make processors for more special uses. Snapdragon is a very mobile-friendly processor, and IBM typically makes server-grade processors. Processors for render farms or for um, large data collection and storage, or even special uses like supercomputers, which are essentially just a bunch of low-power, and high output CPUs all strung together using some fancy software. At least that's how I know them. It might not be accurate. Don't take my word for it. That's just what I have learned them to be. Um, supercomputers can be using a variety of different things. That's just my take on it. 
So the benefits of going with AMD. The AMD is a good value per dollar at this point. I know that they said in the news recently that they're moving to more towards that performance peak that they can hit. They're going for more of the, um, the higher end section of the market. However, we haven't seen that yet. And something like their 8350, the uh, X processor, the 8350, it is a fantastic value per dollar. It is an eight core, $100-ish at the time of this video processor that runs everything well. It can process videos, it can render 3D things. It does really well, it just outputs a lot of heat and it sucks a lot of power, which really is kind of not that great because it means that you're going to have to either purchase a decent water cooler or a big air cooler, similar to my air cooler, or you're going to have to look into some other cooling solution that would be able to hold the heat from that processor. Another thing about AMD is they don't have hyper-threading. Hyper-threading is something we'll talk about more later on in the Intel section. However, it's something that needs to be noted here. Essentially, one processor core is one processor core, period. Now, AMD is a more budget-friendly option, but they also make some very good components. So if you are a fan of what AMD is doing, or not so much of a fan of what Intel is doing, then feel free to go with them. You really can't go wrong. Intel, on the other hand, they, they are a bit of a different beast. They go for the highest performance parts that they can. They are the ones with the thousand, two thousand, fifteen thousand dollar Xeon processors that not a lot of people use, but those that do use it are willing to pay to get those 36 compute cores under one CPU. Now, Intel processors are faster. They have uh, a lower TDP. This lower TDP means it's going to output less heat, which means you need less of a cooling system or you need a similar cooling system that will run its fans much, much, much slower, which is great because it means that your system is going to be overall more quiet. However, the issue with Intel processors is they are vastly more expensive. The current high-end uh, Intel processor is roughly $300 for a four core with hyper-threading processor. Now this is the consumer end processors. We're not gonna get into the enthusiast grade stuff like I have in my machine um, because not a lot of people go with those processors and the performance per dollar really starts to drop off once you hit those processors. Now the high-end consumer processor, the four core with hyper-threading, means you're going to get a total of eight logical cores. These eight logical cores are going to be the same as if you had the FX 8350 that I talked about before that has eight physical cores. The only difference is that you have four less cores. So you're going to have less heat, less power consumption, and generally a better processing experience. Intel is also on the cutting edge of things. They are on the forefront of the research uh, within these processors at this point. We don't know about the future, we just know about now. Intel is doing the best that they can with what they have and uh, they're doing a pretty fantastic job. Now granted, they only implement increases of performance between three and 15%, I believe, three and 5%. It's something along those lines. They implement slow amounts of performance every year. Instead of doing one giant upgrade, like we all believe that they could if they wanted to. Uh, it'd be great if they just threw out all of the R&D work that they've done and they just give us the best processor they can make right now. But that as a business, that's not really profitable for them, especially since they know that they're already the choice, essentially, for most high-end enthusiasts. If only because they have the processors that can do the most work. They have the eight core processor that has 16 theoretical cores because of the hyper-threading, and AMD just doesn't have anything like that as of this point. So now on to how to actually pick your processor. What are the things that you need to look into when you're picking your processor? First one is probably the core count. You need to know how many cores you think are necessary. At this point, I would recommend at least a quad core for gaming or a dual core with hyper threading um, or just a regular quad core without hyper threading. Either or should work fine for you. 
Um, dual cores are starting to lag behind in terms of performance numbers that I've seen. However, you shouldn't see that significant of an impact if you have to cut back on your processor budget allocation. The next thing is the uh, set of features that you're going to get on that chipset. The chipset is kind of the, the instruction packet for that CPU to make sure that the CPU can talk with the rest of the components. The chipset on the X99 platform, for instance, includes USB 3, it includes um, up to a bunch of PCI Express lanes, it also includes SATA Express and M.2, and all of those cool new features that you might not find on the, F, uh, the FX8350 board because its chipset is much older. Now, a lot of those things are nice, but they're not all necessary. For instance, I don't use the M.2 support because I don't need it, because the standard hard drive that I bought, the standard SSD, was cheaper than the M.2 version. But if you are looking for those features, you need to make sure that whatever processor you're looking for has those features as part of its chipset. The next thing you need to look into is the RAM. Um, because different processors, especially in today's market, have different types of RAM. There's DDR3 RAM and DDR4 RAM. We'll get into the benefits and detriments of both in the RAM video coming up later, but you need to make sure that you get the right RAM for your system, whether it's DDR4 or DDR3. At this point, we haven't seen much of a difference between DDR3 and DDR4. There are differences, especially for large data swapping, um, however, in typical consumer use, you're not going to see much of an impact. So if you can go for a DDR3 processor, I would strongly advise to, because the DDR4 processors just don't really, in my opinion, give a good value um, in comparison. Once you have that figured out, you get to pick your AMD versus Intel. It's really your decision. I can't tell you one way or the other. I personally enjoy Intel's processors, mostly because they give me more logical cores to work with. My current machine has six cores, 12 threads, due to hyper-threading, and it makes video editing so much easier. And it, you really, you really don't understand. I, I'm trying to work on this laptop to do basic, basic image editing took about as long as that computer takes to render out this 4K footage. It is crazy how fast it is, and I am so thankful to all of those that made my step experience possible to build this machine, because it's really helping out when I'm making these videos. So compatibilities. What compatibilities do you have to look for when you're choosing your system and you're trying to decide which processor to get, which motherboard to get, which RAM to get? Well, the first one is your motherboard. The motherboard has to include the chipset that you need for your processor. Now this is displayed on pretty much every website that I've ever used when picking a processor. PC Part Picker is a great source for this because they make sure that the chipset is compatible with the CPU. Make sure that you also get a heatsink that is compatible with that chipset or that socket on the motherboard. Some processors have a variance of sockets depending on the motherboard you get, especially the X99 version, uh, there is an MATX board, I believe, and a mini ITX board that have a sm slightly smaller socket to make it more compatible with the RAM. That's an issue because that means you have to have a heatsink that is compatible with those smaller socket sizes. So make sure that you have a heatsink that fits. Uh, sometimes the stock cooler won't fit. You need to make sure that it will if you plan on using it. I, mine didn't come with a stock cooler, however there is one. If you're using the X99 platform, I really can't recommend using that stock cooler that Intel has available for purchase. I would advise getting something a little higher end to cool your system because, trust me, six cores minimum on a stock cooler, no matter how good that stock cooler may be, it will struggle with heat and your system will be running very hot, which can damage the longevity of the CPU. Another thing compatibility-wise you need to look for is overclocking. If you're buying an overclocking chip, uh, for example the k SKU for Intel or pretty much any AMD processor or doesn't support overclocking and you have an overclocking chip, that's no problem, and vice versa, they can work in conjunction with each other. You just need to make sure that you know whether you can overclock your system or you can't. 
is if you try to overclock a non-overclocking processor or you try to overclock on a non-overclocking board, you can run into some stability issues and you could end up bricking your system. Bricking as in destroying, uh, it won't work anymore. You'll have to return parts or buy new parts, that type of thing. The next thing in terms of compatibility that you need to look for is the overall um, experience that you want to have. Do you, how many cords do you really need? Do you want a quad core because you're just doing basic, um, just basic system tasks such as playing light video games or even extreme video games for that matter? Um, or how about you're doing some video editing or 3D rendering and you want a serious PC, you want a serious CPU? You need to make sure you take that into account throughout the entirety of your budget to make sure that you can allocate enough funds for your processor. If you don't spend enough money on your processor, the rest of your system will suffer. But if you spend too much on your CPU or your processor, the rest of your system is going to suffer even more because they're going to be bottlenecked by the CPU. Bottlenecking is another issue that we could get into. It essentially just means that one section of parts or one uh, part in particular is holding back the rest of your system because it just can't keep up with the amount of data that it needs to process. And the last compatibility that you need to look for is the budget. Like I was talking about just recently, you need to make sure that your processor fits within your budget and that it fits in a good spot. I say depending on, again, everything is very variable. Um, if you need a rendering rig, I would advise putting up to around a quarter of your budget towards your processor. Up to. So that doesn't mean you have to do uh, a quarter or 25% of your budget towards the processor, but that's something I would recommend. If you're building a gaming machine, I'd go more 10 to 15%, um, maybe a little less. If you're on in between processors, say you're in between an i5 and an i7 of some generation of processors, I would advise trying to go for the i7 if possible because it will last longer. It is quote unquote more future, future proof. Um, but I really don't like using that word because no system is ever future proof. It will always be outstripped. It's just that future proofing will help you get more performance um, over time. So in general, picking your processor is a fairly easy task. You just need to make sure that it fits in that sweet spot of yours. For my case, my, I picked a $300 processor on a $2,000 build because I wanted to focus mainly on that processor and making sure that it had a cooling solution that was adequate. So I spent another $100 just on a seat heat sink for that processor. So I spent roughly $400 of my $2,000 budget on that system. The reason I didn't go with the full 500 because the next processor up in the line was about $200 more expensive and that would mean that I hit that 25% mark very 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 quickly. Now for a general gaming rig like we talked about before, 10 to 15% is good enough. So picking your processor isn't all that difficult. You just need to make sure that it fits in your budget and fits well with the other components that you have. Now if I forgot anything, I'm going to put it on the screen now, so I'm sure I did. Uh, this video is a little rushed, I, I didn't spend as much time on it as I really hoped I would be able to just do to some stuff that I'm currently going through. So I wasn't able to spend as much time on this as I had hoped, so I will leave any, uh, any helpful tips in the comments below so you can check them out. I'll make sure I uh, either post them at the top or I put them in the description so you guys can see any little tips that I forgot. I'm sure I forgot something. Let me know in the comments if you think of anything that I should have included, um, and maybe I'll include them in the, in the next video. So, thank you guys all so much for all of your support, your likes and dislikes and your comments. I really appreciate all of it. It helps me a lot and it really shows me whether you're appreciating the content or what I can do better to improve the content for the future. Because I want to keep making content, I plan on keeping making, I plan to keep making this content for the foreseeable future. 
So please make sure you hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with what's going on with the channel and what types of stuff we're posting, as well as hit a like or a dislike, I really appreciate it. And uh, leave a comment below on uh, what processor you ended up going with and uh, how you came to that decision. What types of things did you have to overcome? Did you, was there a problem that you ran into or a compatibility that you uh, needed to look into that I didn't talk about? So. Thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one. See ya.